entertainment are back with another discerning selection of the talent suite. Talent in the shape of to turn director Gibson in his movie, Man Without a Face. And I wanted to explain what you've been doing without a face. The plot of Man Without a Face is in a way a very classic plot. Boy discovers monster. Monster discovers boy. Boy finds that uh, monster has a great deal to offer him, in this case in the sort of learning about life, learning about things like poetry and Shakespeare and even geometry. This may sound crazy, but if you're still in the business, I, I could really use some help in an exam. Why does that sound crazy? I don't know. It's just that I've never thought of you as a teacher. Nobody does. I think it's an excellent film, and it's an excellent film for very many different reasons. First of all, the director is a very, very fine movie director indeed. The director happens to be Mel Gibson, and it's his first movie. It's very accomplished, his framing, his selection of shots. Your cat brother has developed a fetish for my underwear. No accounting for taste. The thing has this temper. You know, I think we should put it to sleep. I think we should put it to sleep. Will you ever touch Mac in your bed? What are you going to do? I'm trying to eat. I that I could tell it well. I thought that I could, I was equipped to tell it as well or better than anyone, so why not? Did you ever wonder why men and women are attracted to each other? It's called sex, no is that? And it's not on your exam. <sighs> no, I, I don't mean like that. I mean, I mean why, why is it so difficult? No, why, why can they stay together, stay attracted? Uh, you know, I never did consider myself a source of advice to the love one. I mean, it's not a weepy, although I have to say, I did have um, uh, a lump in my throat. Hello, Mrs. Palin. My name is... I don't know who you are. What do you want here? Uh, I, I came to see how Charles was, and I wanted to explain... What you've been doing to my son? I haven't done anything to your son. Irrational. Get out! Get out! On this show, Moni Love and Sinclair will be sharing the stage with the man at the top of the bill, Ken. The idea which I haven't done um, with these with uh, these last two albums. Holding me close to you. The year people talking about they remember sort of. Uh, Venues. Not the idea. The idea is for me to, to give music back to the people. Sure. How is it going to be? How is it going to be different from how you performed in the past? Cognito and brand new heavies using us sort of slowly pick them off and say, you know, would you want to? I'll be together, you know, and so that'll always be there. I'll get to the front. No, get, no, wait. And uh, I've never watched Mr. Wisdom, you know, and yet you don't want to sort of, you know, you're trying to explain your position. Uh, I walked on stage, said, Lenny Jones, uh, it was in Manchester, I said, all the way from uh, London, Lee Evans. And I walked on stage and this fire extinguisher went boing, right on my head, you know, straight away. I hadn't even said anything yet. Sort of made me way to the mic and it went boing. And like the instructions were like imprinted on my forehead, you know, how to use this extinguisher. You know, because I, I lost my girlfriend and it's very difficult, you know, if you, like, what do you say? If you see a girl, you think, what do I say? You're out of practice, you know, I was like, what, what do you say? What do you do? You get, you get these cops called Craig and they go, uh, hey, my name's Craig, how you doing? <laughs> And girls got excitement and they go, for me, run about here, my brain seizes up. It's true, I see a girl and I think, uh, uh, my name's Lee, uh, draw a drink, uh, dance, I mean, do you Do you look forward to playing in big venues? Well, what I will do as a rock star is keep to the small venues, you know, keep with the crowd, I feel. Uh, no, yeah, I don't know, whatever comes along, it's a laugh, isn't it, you know, if it comes along, great. That'd be good fun, you know. Uh, you go to a wedding, right? I swear, and, uh, I always stand on the outside and watch the people in the middle. And I swear, the best people to watch are the over 40 year olds. Now, I don't mean any harm by this, but they've lost all coordination. <laughs> it's true, they're in the middle of the floor going like that. <laughs> I can still do this, sunny boy. Oh, yes. <laughs> and why does it always turn out to be the bleating dad? <laughs> Concierge has been built as a 90s update on that classic genre, the New York romantic comedy. It's been filmed in the most lush and opulent locations in the Big Apple and stars that modern day matinee idol Michael J. Fox. Welcome to the Bradbury. We're 
stand still here, Elliot. I don't like to stand still. Doug! Oh, Doug! Oh, Doug! Doug? Basic. It seemed to be about this guy who was like a glorified bellboy in a hotel in New York, and he can fix everything. And he's got this dream exactly. that one day he'll own a hotel himself. Uh, look, confuse yourself with all these little denominations. You wait until I'm the best friend you ever had, then you give me a tip so big it feels like passing a kidney stone. That's bad, huh? The whole film, really, although it pretends to be a morality film, is about greed. The character that Michael J. Fox plays is... It's got that nice kind of 50s movie tension, you know, it's, um... It's nice, it's a little like the apartment. My old man was a cook at a resort in the Catskills for 27 years. Place called Hurley's in the kitchen of a heart attack. I really think the only the details. No, 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 no. I made the call. The big man will be here tomorrow. And I trust everything was satisfactory, miss? And that I hope she does really well. Let's get married, Charlie. I do. The Colonel. Because he puts an addictive chemical in his chicken that makes you cleave it fortnightly smart ass. Which brings together musicians, writers and artists around the theme of man's resistance to conflict. It's called Testaments of War. Harrison, whom we're privileged... He'd survived the jungle and the japs. So his grin's gone when we all celebrated Hirohito's empire collapse. My shorter father's all in and looks glad and full of euphoria he'd never found before or since. And I'm with the grocer's lad, two fingers turned, that fraying. It's grabbed two awards at this year's Cannes Film Festival for its dark and unsentimental examination of the part. As far as I see, is is the, this guy Johnny's journey really? Three moments, twenty-three sights every two hours. Go, Gizmo. Good. Yes. It's a bit like it's a wonderful life in some ways. That the old film with James Stewart. It's like it affect different people. Polanski, Scorsese, and Lynch. Keep second per second is a show about a man who jumps out of a hotel window and uh, on the way down he has several thoughts that come to him very quickly about why he jumped. Mark Murphy, the young choreographer who runs VTOL, I think the company's been going mm, three years. Uh, Mark is a very athletic character and his dancers have to be very tough, very strong, very well trained. I'm amazed they're not completely overwhelmed with injuries. I think I've always been a very physical person and have sort of p pursued physical activities. And I think it's quite a, quite a fresh approach to, to bring the physicality of, of particularly sports like rugby and things, lots of heavy contact into dance. It gives it a much more, to me, a more sort of realistic feel. They do take very um, heavy risks. They bash each other around, they fall off things, they, they scale the sets sometimes, they leap off and on to beds, so they, oh my goodness, yes, it's extremely <laughs> rigorous, shall we say. The film element in the piece comes from my interest in filmmaking and also my, my sort of great love of cinema. And so it made sense this time to, to mix both of those in, to give it, um, to give it more than three dimensions. This element of cinema, film and video, is very attractive to lots of people who wouldn't otherwise go to a straight performance. That's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Next week I meet reggae superstars Aswad. And we give Mario Van Peebles the once over in his new film, Posse. Next Thursday night, don't be late.